Hello and welcome everyone, Frog here. We are together today to review Dragon Quest Heroes. Before everything again, I completed Dragon Quest Heroes to 100% completion, and that was quite a while ago. I think 7 years to be correct. So I had to restart a new game to remember the things about the game. I'd like to mention that I've played a fair amount of Muso, but my knowledge of Dragon Quest remain limited. Not that I do not care about those games, but as a PC player mostly, I've been starved of Dragon Quest games for a long time, and we're still lacking 95% of the title. Overall, the completion of this game is quite quick for a warrior game, it is probably one of the shortest I've done, and there is a little bit of grind for the 100%, but nothing that compares to other warrior games. I believe it is quite short for a Dragon Quest game as well. I cannot really say as the only Dragon Quest I've done was 8 some time ago, but if my memory serves me right, those games tend to be more around 70 to 100 hours mark. Also, as always, I've played that game on PC using Steam, and I've used a controller as I always do for me, so I had no problem to run the game performance-wise, and that's about it. Also, one last thing, there will be no spoilers in the review in case people will be interested in playing it. Now, let's talk a bit about the game itself. Dragon Quest Heroes is a game developed by Koei Tecmo and published by Square Enix. Nothing too surprising there, as the game used the Muso formula of Koei Tecmo with the license of Square Enix. Dragon Quest Heroes is a Muso, a subgenre of the hack and slash that play a little bit different from the usual one, and we'll talk about this in the gameplay part of the review. You start the game as either Aurora or Luceus as your main character. They are basically clones of each other, one using fire and the other ice. Whatever your choice end up being, you'll have the other as an ally anyway. The only thing that it changed is that the game doesn't allow you to swap your main character ever. So the character you will pick now will be in your party in every single fight. Not that it changed much, but pick the one that looked the best for you. For me, it was Aurora. Now before we head to the story, I'll mention that I found the game to be fun. But there is definitely some bad things I'll have to talk about, and that might ruin it for you. I'd say the game is slightly more toward the good, but we're not having a masterpiece either. But for now, let's talk about the story. The story is more of a reason to have characters from every old Dragon Quest game meets than anything, but there is one, and it is going quite slow. I won't have much to talk about as I judge that after 3 or 4 hours of playtime, we're in spoiled territory. The game starts in the kingdom of Alba, where monsters and humans live peacefully together. Until one day, the monster that once used to be friendly turned mad. You'll take the control of Aurora or Luceus and help defend the city from the monster and save the king. To finally go on a journey to uncover the truth about what happened to the monster and the world. As it seems the city of Alba isn't the only one affected by this mysterious incident. While the story doesn't seem to be very complicated or anything, as I understand it Dragon Quest was never about overcomplicated story but about a great journey that leads you to discover new area and meet new NPC that will make it memorable instead. I believe this kind of story where you help people throughout the world and travel to meet more people is better done in a traditional JRPG Dragon Quest. I do not think it is done awfully there, but it's simply not as good. If I'd have to compare Dragon Quest VIII and Dragon Quest Heroes, often Dragon Quest VIII left me in awe, you had mysteries in a new town, you met new characters, there was a plot, then you moved to somewhere else. The game felt endless and it was definitely something I enjoyed. Here, you'll most likely have to read a lot before you get to go fighting, and most of the time you won't care as much as it isn't as detailed or polished as it was in the mainline title. Let's talk about gameplay. Gameplay-wise, I believe Dragon Quest Heroes is quite good. Far from the best, but most of the time Koei Tecmo ain't too bad doing gameplay, as it's what Muso are all about. There is some tiny problems, but before, I'll explain the difference in gameplay here from an usual warrior game. There is a system of magic, where your characters will be able to use spells that will drain their mana bar. Unlike most other warrior games where your special abilities have cooldown, here it is gated by your mana points. So in theory, if you have enough mana, you can spam your best abilities without cooldown, but those tend to cost a lot of mana. Each character possesses 4 active skills that are different from each other's, except Aurora and Luceus that are clones. There is a lot of variety in what the characters do, but they tend to have a specified design idea. 
like for example Mage, Guardian, Fist Fighter, etc. Some are more unique than others, obviously. There is also a system of tension that will replace the Musou attacks in this game. And at the first activation, it will grant you infinite mana for your spell, as well as damage immunity. The second activation will unleash a devastating AoE finisher. That finisher will also automatically activate once the tension timer runs out. The finishers are in my opinion well done, most of them are impressive, they look awesome and do insane damage. You'll be able to gather tension on each character as you'll have a party of four, each one having its own tension meter and mana bar. You unfortunately cannot give any order to any of those characters and the AI can be extremely stupid. Some characters are in my opinion bad, not because of their kit that can be awesome, but because the AI is so stupid that it cannot use properly those characters and you'll get tired of it quickly enough to change that character and not use it again. You'll also have access to a monster medal system that allow you to position monsters on the map to defend position. You'll very often have missions in which you'll need to defend the position and those are extremely useful. You will need to defeat monsters beforehand and hope it loot its medal. Then you'll be able to summon it to help you in battle. They won't follow you and will simply guard an area, which helped quite a bit already. There is also some monsters that can give you some positive effect like regenerating your health or mana. Before we go to the next part, I'd like to talk about the numbers of characters, and I do not think anyone expected there to be a lot of them. There is 13 characters in the game, 12 if we judge that Aurora and Lucius are clones. 9 of those are from previous Dragon Quest games, they come from Dragon Quest 4, 5, 6, and 8. That is little if we compare it to other Warriors games, but games are quite different and the low amount of character doesn't have too much here. Also, there is a skill tree to upgrade your characters. You can increase the stats you prefer, and a good part of it is unique to each character, making them all different from each other. Let's talk about the difficulty and the content. As for the difficulty, it is harder than your average Warrior game. If I'd have to compare to a game I've already reviewed here, I'd say it's harder than Samurai Warriors 5. It isn't impossibly hard, it is just slightly challenging. The difficulty is satisfying. And as for the content, I'd say definitely that compared to, for example, a Dynasty Warriors 8, it is low. But I believe this game shouldn't be chosen if you're looking for a game with infinite content. It has to be taken for the same thing you'd take a Dragon Quest. For its journey, or in the last case, for its gameplay, that changed a bit from the usual muscle or Dragon Quest. It took me 50 hours approximately to end it 100%. That is very quick for a warrior game, and I had to grind for those. So do not expect that much content for it either. Let's talk about the graphics and the soundtrack. Well, I'll just quickly mention that in my opinion the graphics are perfect how they are, but that will be a question of taste. And some people might be happy to see some characters they like to play before with updated models as well. As for the soundtrack, it's the usual Dragon Quest OST with some soundtrack added to it I guess. I think it does its job, but I wouldn't go listen to it outside of the game. As for the positives and negatives, if you're looking for a shorter than usual warrior game, and to be honest with the number of long musu there is, I don't mind from time to time to have a shorter one, this one will probably do the trick. I think the gameplay is enjoyable overall, but can be quite quickly repetitive by the fact you'll be always forced to play as the main character every mission. You can swap, yes, but one of the characters will always stay and there isn't much diversity character-wise. It does good for the time you ask to play it. The maps are small and you'll be running very slowly too. Gameplay can be a bit more stiff compared to newer entries. Nothing too big there, you get used to it, but that is there. Boss fights are interesting to help keep diversity. Most of the game will be more to defend something. It changed from the usual formula of other warriors. There is gonna be a lot of cutscenes and talking early on that might bother you if you want to play. Most of it ain't the most interesting either. The game is overall quite slow to start. Each character has a finisher with a little cutscene. They are satisfying to do and all different one from another. The AI is not always the smartest. Some characters, most notably a mage that you'll unlock later, will be victim of a poor AI. But that won't be the only one. You'll probably by the end of the game pick the most optimal characters that AI can play at least a little to avoid problems. 
The game difficulty is, in my opinion, quite good. And if you're not used to muscle, it might give you even more of a challenge. And that's a good thing, in my opinion, as most muscle tend to be too easy. Conclusion. I did enjoy a lot Dragon Quest Heroes, but toward the end the game felt repetitive and lacked content. Maybe a bit of depth too. The game is clearly aimed for people that want a shorter Dragon Quest related muscle experience and to play some of their favorite characters. Dragon Quest Heroes take inspiration from both series and I think it does it well. But it probably is worse than both mainline series as it will struggle to please both fanbase that want opposed things. It remains overall pleasant and is a shorter experience that you probably will end up forgetting about or get bored of after too many hours by its lack of depth and content. But for a bit, doing the story and some side quests, enjoying the 3D models of each character and being able to discover their abilities that remain worth a shot if you're not a stranger to the Dragon Quest universe. If you dislike the gameplay, that you find it too slow or dislike little maps, or simply the universe of Dragon Quest, I believe it will be a wrong game for you. This video now come to an end. Thanks for watching. Do not hesitate to subscribe if you wish to see more in the future. Have a good day and take care.